ಓಂ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಚಿಮಿರಂಧಸ ಜ್ಞಾನಂಜನ ಶಲಾಖಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುಲಿತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೇ ನಮಃ the good king yudhishthira inquired o great souls will he become as saintly a king as pious in his very name and as famous and glorified in his in his achievements as as others who appeared in this great royal family purport the forefathers of king yudhishthira were all great saintly kings pious and glorified by their great achievements they were all saints on the royal throne and therefore all the members of the state were happy pious well behaved prosperous and spiritually enlightened under strict guidance of the great souls and spiritual injunctions such great saintly kings were trained up and as a result the kingdom was full of saintly persons and was a happy land of spiritual life maharaj yudhishthira was himself a replica of his ancestors and he desired that the next king after him become exactly like his great forefathers he was happy to learn from the learned brahmanas that by astrological calculations the child would be born a first great devotee of the lord and more confidentially he wanted to know whether the child was going to follow in the footsteps of his great forefathers <coughs> that is the way of the monarchical state the reigning king should be a pious chivalrous devotee of the lord and fear personified for the upstarts he must also leave an heir apparent equally qualified to rule over the innocent citizens in the modern setup of the democratic states the people themselves are fallen to the qualities of the shudras or less and the government is run by their representative who is ignorant of the scriptural mode of administrative education thus the whole atmosphere is surcharged with shudra qualities manifested by lust and avarice you all know what avarice means avarice proper is used the word avarice it's more or less a synonym for greed lust and greed calm and low such administrators quarrel every day among themselves the cabinet cabinet of ministers changes often due to party and group selfishness everyone wants to exploit the state resources till he dies no one retires from political life unless forced to do so how can such low grade men do good to the people the result is corruption intrigue and hypocrisy they should learn from the shrimad bhagavatam how ideal the administrators must be before they can be given charge of different posts this is a wonderful description of a of a just opposite of wonderful wonderful in the sense of it's so succinctly and accurately put by sri la propa the, the situation of governance in modern society especially in india uh it's it's practically open not only india but many corrupt countries of the world i mean all the countries are corrupt <coughs> one way or the other but in india there's not even that much attempt to cover it up that at the, the administrators who are so charged with shudra qualities they quarrel every day among themselves is not the politicians they're always arguing among themselves and then they make friends again because they friendship is i mean it's like that in the whole material world but it's quite apparent among the politicians that their friendships their alliances and their enemies change from time to time just based upon their uh, political the ongoing political necessity so you just like you find the government of india now the congress and the left front are together the left front doesn't actually support congress in any other way except that they want to be in power and they want to keep bjp out so it's a their their un, their union their coalition is on, it's on very fragile grounds in any way but then even within the parties you see people they want power they don't get enough of it so they split off 
like power, power and power, those who know Maharashtra politics at the present time. He was a member of Congress and they thought he might be becoming prime minister, but he went a long way away from that, so he made his own party. Anyway, what else? The cabinet, the cabinet of ministers changes often due to party and group selfishness. Everyone wants to exploit the state resources till he dies. Just see this in the context of the modern Indian situation. Prabhupada was writing this in the early 1960s in India. And things have got a lot more corrupt since then. No one retires from political life unless forced to do so. You know that Srila Prabhupada, even before he took sannyas, he wrote a letter to Mahatma Gandhi that why are you staying in this rotten politics? Retire. Join me and pre you're known as a great devotee of Bhagavad Gita, so why don't you join me and preach Bhagavad Gita as it is? Why well, don't remain in this rotten politics? Otherwise, Prabhupada wrote, you will come to a very bad end. I can't remember exactly the words he said, which soon came to pass. He, were, he, he was in politics. He was supposed to be a saintly person, but he was in politics for the sake of getting Swaraja. But then he stayed on afterwards and the you know, Nehru and company, they weren't very happy with that. Because he was supposed to be, his whole effort was for Swaraja, but then he remained messing about in politics. And so, although people were lamenting, there were others who were happy. In the, the politicians, in, they were happy that God says shot him because he was, he was a burden to them. So Prabhupada said, if you don't Get out of this rotten politics. You'll come to a lamentable end. Something like this, which happened. As everyone knows, he was shot and didn't say, Hey Ram, at the last moment, according to his personal secretary who was standing next to him. So how can such low-grade men do good to the people? They're low-grade People give respect to politicians, but what are they? They're, they're, they're greedy rascals, cheaters, biggest liars. Everyone knows the politicians are lying. You know, China Pandit himself said, Vishvaso. Hmm? What is that? Hmm? Yeah, but what is that? Srishu Raja Kaleshucha, Vishvasha Naiva, and what's the next word? I can't remember. That uh, one should not trust a woman or a politician. Prabhupada often quoted that, but we're not supposed to quote that in modern Iskon because we don't say things against women. Vishvasa Naiva Kartavya, Srishu Raja Kaleshucha. Don't trust a woman or a politician. Well, this thing about not trusting women, Kunti Devi herself, she was the cause of that. That Karna, oh no, Yudhishthir, Yudhishthir cursed that after she kept the secret of Karna's being their brother, then Yudhishthir cursed that women should never be able to keep a secret. So. When he found out. So they're low grade people. I mean in, in modern India it's it's well known that people who have criminal records, they're they're in the parliament. And we're told that our Prime Minister is very clean, but as it said, you know a man by his company. He's supporting and supported by people who are not clean at all. So what kind of what kind of person is that? So the result is corruption, intrigue and hypocrisy. This is going on. Corruption, intrigue 
and hypocrisy. Intrigue, you know what that means? I sometimes use it. In ordinary Indian English, these words aren't used. Intrigue, it means like, means like politics, politicking. So they should learn from the Sriman Bhagavatam how ideal the administrators must be before they can be given charge of different posts. Yudhishthira wanted to get the throne. He was fighting. He was very prepared to fight to get the throne. Now we find that's very common in the modern age. They're, they're fighting for the throne, fighting for power. There are different coup d'état. <coughs> you know what that means? <coughs> that means... Uh, it means uh, military takeover of the government. It's very common. And then there'll be they'll be fighting between different factions, not not just verbal fighting, but you know, with bombs, tanks, guns, planes, etc. So they're fighting Yudhishthir was fighting for the post, but he's not like some low class Bush or Saddam Hussein or he's not because he wants power, although someone like Bush or this Blair, they'll talk about we're invading the country for the sake of humanity and all this. But it's basically they're doing it because they're supported by rich people who have interests in exploiting the oil. Everyone knows. So Yudhishthira Maharaj wasn't that he wanted to have the position so that he could execute his dharma as a kshatriya, which was to protect the people in a manner that they could become spiritually enlightened. You may ask, well, why are we discussing politics here in the Srimad Bhagavatam class? Yeah. Because that's the subject here. The Bhagavatam is discussing this and Prabhupada is giving his purports, how it's practically applied in life. Here Prabhupada writes that the Rajarshis, they, they, they were so saintly and pious that the people in the state automatically, they were happy, pious, well-behaved, prosperous and spiritually enlightened. But we find in the modern age because the, the leaders are all demons and rascals. Rakshasa, Kalimash, no, that's another verse. It's uh, Mlechara, hmm, Mlechara Janyarupina. How does that go? That uh, Rajavesha, Dasu, the, the criminals in the the uh, prajasti bhakshishyanti mlecha rajan yarupina. This is predicted in the Bhagavatam that in Kali Yoga, the mlechas, the barbaric, uncivilized people, will take the position of kings and exploit the people. <coughs> Literally says bhakshishyanti. They will eat the people, they will devour the people. So, in the modern age, because the rulers are bad, therefore the members of the state are unhappy, impious, badly behaved, prosperous. No, the people in general are struggling just to get their basic needs. Everyone's, pretty much every, not only do people not have money, but most people are in debt. In the modern age, most people are, are in debt. In the Western countries, you think people are rich in the Western countries? Everyone's in debt, is it right? You can tell, you're in the Western countries. Everyone's in debt, and that's coming to India also. Some says, oh, I'm so lucky, I got a bank loan to purchase land, I can build a house. A bank loan means you have to spend the next 25 years paying it off. Everyone's in debt. And... Uh, just as they were spiritually enlightened uh, under Maharaj Yudhishthira and such pious kings. So in the modern age, they're spiritually doomed. Just if we're driving last night from Hyderabad to Sukundarabad, 
You see one big poster advertising Amma, and then after that, immediately after that, H. H. Sri Sri Ravi Shankar. You know, well, yeah, what a choice. <laughs> what do you? What do you? It's difficult. You know, it's black stool or red stool. Uh, sometimes people ask questions. You know, which is which is better, this one or you know, which is worse? I mean, it's, you know, which which way do you want to go to hell through being embraced by Amma or paying two thousand rupees for seminars to H H Sri Sri Ravi Shankar? No. I guess the embrace is free. You might as well might as well save your money here. It's just a love, love, Amma. So. This can only happen where there's no pious king. If there was any pious king, they'd have chopped off the heads of this. It would be, they wouldn't have any head of Amma to show on the photo because it would already be rolling on the ground. And H.H. H. Ravi Shankar, he'd get his beard chopped off <laughs> with the axe and along with his neck. These people, they shouldn't be allowed to live. They're demons. They're posing as spiritual leaders and in the name of spiritual life, they are diverting all attention to themselves, which should be diverted to Krishna. And that's why Yudhishthira Maharaj, why Krishna wanted Yudhishthira Maharaj on the throne and not Duryodhana. Duryodhana knew how to rule. He was also born in a Kshatriya family. He, he could do the, the basic job of administrating the state he could do, but he was envious of Krishna and Krishna's devotees. He was actually more envious of Krishna's devotees than of Krishna, which from Krishna's point of view made it even worse. If someone's envious of him, well, he doesn't mind so much, but if they're envious of his devotees, he really minds a lot. So Duryodhana was extremely envious of Yudhishthira Maharaj and his brothers. Yudhishthira wasn't envious of him. He was very fair-minded. He didn't want the fight. You know, but it became inevitable because Duryodhana was just completely unreasonable. So Yudhishthira Maharaj, Krishna wanted him on the throne. And Yudhishthira Maharaj, he wanted to know if Parikshit Maharaj would hold up the same values. Just like yeah, here's glorified, pious and glorified by their great achievements. There's a, there's a term which is said in Sanskrit, maybe you've heard that. Swanama dhanya. Have you heard that term? Swanama dhanya. You don't read spiritual literature in, in your own language, otherwise you'd know these terms. Swanama dhanya means one who is glorified by his own name. That means when you hear the name Yudhishthira, you immediately think, oh, very pious. People give their children, at least some, it's not many, but you'll find. It's a name, people give names like Yudhishthira. I know one boy in Baroda called Yudhishthira. So they give them part as a common name, huh? part, which means... Yudhishthira, Bhim, Arjun, Nakul, Sahadev, they're all, they can all be called Parat. So people, Arjun, that's a, quite a common name. Bhim Sain, these are common names. Sahadev is quite a common name, not only of Sahadev does, so I saw briefly, he's here by his seat. So, Nakul, not a very common name. I used to know one man in Bangladesh by the name Nakul. But anyway, people give names like this. Why? Because by hearing, you think, oh, very nice. You don't hear people, they don't give names Duryodhana. <laughs> <laughs> Although in uh, Tamil Nadu, the chief minister, he gave one son the name Hitler and the next one Stalin. <laughs> and or maybe it was around the other way. And Stalin is the mayor of Chennai. You'll probably be the next chief minister of Tamil Nadu after this Karuna Nidhi, which is a very good name, name of Krishna, but he's not, he's a complete rascal, an atheist and demon. 
And I'm glad I'm saying that in Secunderabad, because if I was saying it in Chennai, I'd probably be arrested. <laughs> Although it was Jai Lalita who arrested Shankaracharya. Anyway, we're getting a little, getting a little diverted here. So, <laughs> so Swanama Dhanga. If you hear the name Yudhishthir, think, oh, just by hearing his name, you think someone very pious. He's, glori he's, he's glorified by his own name. What his achievements are such that simply by hearing his name you think, oh, this is someone very good. People give their sons names like Yudhishthir because they want that their... The idea is one thing, they'll get the blessings of a great person by saying that name and by ourselves saying that name to him and by hearing that name, we'll become pious just like the name is given here, Punya Shloka. Punya Shloka means uh, pious by the very name. Yeah, Swanama Dhani. So, and, and then uh, also it's hoped that the child will imbibe such qualities. He'll be inspired by that person, by the character. The name is there, Yudhishthi. Oh, so I should be like that. Then they, then they want to hear what is, what are the activities, what is the character of Yudhishthir. They want to be like that. So nowadays they don't want to be like that. So they don't give their children names like Krishna or Rama or Sita anymore. They give names like Dimple and Beauty, silly names like that, which have no particular meaning. Pinky. For men, still they give some, but there's some Deepak, which, well, Krishna's also a Deepak, but it's not very direct. <coughs> Chirag means the same thing, but it's <coughs> Urdu, so it's not at all religious. They like to give names. This, uh, years ago, that must be 20 years more, this Ramayana, TV drama came out and the uh, I won't say prostitute but I didn't say it but the actress who was acting the part of Sita so wherever she went people were treat, they wanted to treat her like Sita and you know very very uh, respectful, and that she hated that because she was just the opposite of Sita. That's why I said that word. She wanted, she was, you know, she's a Bollywood, what was that word I said? Anyway. <laughs> so, she was wearing, she, she would like to wear tight blue jeans, which in those days was considered vulgar. Nowadays it's considered normal. That was considered a high fashion at the time. But people, they wanted her to be like Sita. They wanted to work, but she didn't want to be like that. She didn't like to be thought of in that role because you know, she's a Bollywood, something beginning with P. So nowadays they're all like that. Now you don't have to be a Bollywood film actress to be a something beginning with P. Every woman. It's said in... Uh, Ram Charit Manas, that in Kali Yuga there won't be any prostitutes. They won't have a job. Why? Because the ordinary housewives are available to everyone. So there's no, the prostitutes don't have a job. You can pick up any woman anywhere. That's true in the West, isn't it? You know, you've been in the West. That's, it's like that. You can, any man can just walk up to any woman and talk with her and chat with her and make friends and, and, you know, have a, have a fling, as they say, and married, unmarried, it doesn't matter. So it's come to that. That, that shouldn't be allowed. If they're pious kings, then these things shouldn't be allowed. But in the name of freedom, they, have, they allow all kinds of sinful activities. Women's liberation. And they think the women should, if they want, they can, you know, they can mix up with men as much as they like, and they can 
They can have abortions and do whatever they like. But that's not civilized because that means the, the destruction of the culture of the Strishu, Dushtashu, Varshnaya, Jayate, Varna, Sankara. People don't understand this and they protest against this. Why? Because they're Varna, Sankara. They're born from such unchaste women and therefore they, they think that to be a, a monkey in human form is desirable. And they they want to defend that, and they think it's something very good. And if you propose such things that, well, they'll say, yes, women should be protected, that's very good. And protected means that they're not allowed out of the house, and, and only under certain circumstances, they just can't wander off wherever they like. And they say, no, no, that's inhibiting their freedom, and how are you going to protect them? They complain about rape, they walk around in tight jeans and t-shirts showing off their whole body and they laugh and joke with any man who comes up to them. They wander around alone at night at 11 o'clock at night and then they complain about rape. This is nonsense. If you want to be protected, then you have to accept restrictions. There's no protection without restrictions. But people are foolish and they want this actually. They want that women will be cheap and available because they're also low-class rascals, beginning with the uh, with the leaders themselves. The leaders themselves are uh, having, you know, affairs left, right, and center. So, what is the hope for the citizens? They should be pious kings. People in the modern age, they can't imagine what it's like to be under a king, and they they don't want it at all. They're afraid. They're afraid of dictatorship. Well, they should be, because if you get people like, if you get these low-class people, if they take charge, then you're going to have, then your, your pro, the problems that you have under them will be compounded. But if there's an actual pious king, then such, to live in such a situation is far, far more pleasing than to live in a situation, in a situation like that, in, in the modern world, wherever you are, in any country in the world, you can't trust anyone practically. What you pay taxes to the government, but you can't. You're not safe. Your house isn't safe. If you if you go outside your house, if you go away for a week, good chance it'll be burgled. You can't leave your car; it'll be burgled. And what's the government doing with their money? They're taking the money, but they're you can only take the money that tax the citizens if you protect them. The first thing, they should be protected. But there's no protection. Government, uh, what is this? this uh, in America, they have a drug problem. There are thousands of tons of cocaine and heroin coming into the country. And the government can't stop that. They have advanced military systems by which they can they can see everything that's going on in Russia and they can't stop shiploads of plane loads of drugs coming into the country and it's the same people selling it year after year after year the, the police are so stupid they don't know who it, they can't find who it is and stop it seems i mean i don't know it seems pretty suspicious to me they want it's a big business the biggest businesses in the world are are oil, pornography, drugs, and so-called defense, which means weapons for killing other people. So these are all the businesses. So drugs, it's a big business. and They're not going to, why should they stop it? Because they want money, and it's good too, because then the citizens become all drugged up and stupid, and then they don't, they don't complain. And pornography is good. Let there be lots of pornography, because then the people... They won't have the, they can't think clearly and they don't have the willpower to decide, to desire anything higher and then you can exploit them. Then you can sell them Coca-Cola and all kinds of rubbish. Because their brains are so stupid, their brains are full of pornography and sports and all kinds of rubbish, that they can't think clearly. They don't have any higher thoughts, any higher aspirations within, uh, the Nazis, when they invaded all these countries, Poland, Ukraine, 
one of the first things they did was to disseminate pornography widely in these countries. Because if there's lots of pornography, then the men, you know, their, their consciousness becomes dissipated and they don't have the willpower to, to have any fighting or resistance. So it was a, to keep a hold of their power, they gave everyone lots of pornography. Then they just became interested and had lots of sex and then like, like pigs, they don't care that we're going to get slaughtered. They're, they're being, they're having sex and they're alright and that's it. Then they don't have the, they don't have the willpower to desire anything higher. So we can't imagine what it's like to live under a king, but formerly people couldn't imagine what it was like not to live under a king. The kings were so much respected, and they were respectable, you can see, Yudhishthira Maharaj, there's so much respect, he was the protector of the people. The people, the Brahmins, they gave blessings to the king, but they could execute their Brahminical duties because there was a king protecting them. Otherwise what happened, you see, just like Rup Sanatan, they were under a Muslim king, so he knew they were very intelligent, so he forcibly took them into his service. You could say, well, they were denied, but it's said that he, he threatened not only themselves, but like he would, if you don't serve me, they could refuse and he could kill them, but he, he said, no, I'll torture so many of your family members and everything else. So this is a tyrant. This is not a, so he, he was forced, they were forced into his service, although eventually they left. But, uh, the, the Brahmins, they, some of them would be completely detached and others they would give advice to the king. He was not, not an absolute dictator. He took advice. And he ruled on principles, and he was trained. But nowadays, people, they have no idea of this. They, even in medieval Europe, they, they, there were kings, and they were supposed to be, they were considered representatives of God. And they were respected like that. And it was, uh, there was a word, regicide, it means to kill the king. It was considered a, a very great sin, and they, they were, the English people were shocked when Oliver Cromwell, he made a revolution and he executed the king. He had his head chopped off. In England, they were, they were shocked at this. What is this? How can you do that? He, he wasn't a very competent king. It wasn't a very good, of course, none of them, they're all a bunch of lectures, but still, the idea was there that the king is, the representative of God. Even the Sanatana Goswami said that to Nawab Hussein Shah. That, was it Sanatana or Rup? Rup Goswami said that. That, uh, no, it wasn't. It was, Rup Goswami tried to, to hide the fact that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the personality of God. And when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was entering, the uh, administrative area of Nawab Hussein Shah. Then the news came to the king because he, he had his, he has his spies here and there, so he kept gathering news, what's going on in the state. So he heard that this, this Sri Krishna Chaitanya, one sannyasi is coming and he's followed by thousands of people. So he was, for the king, it sounds like bad news, you know, what's, you know, the, there's someone marching on my capital, thousands of Hindus marching on my capital, it sounds pretty dangerous. You know, just not long ago, he, he took thousands of people to march on the home of Chan Kazi <coughs> in Navadri. So he was afraid, what's going on here? Do I have to, should I call the army and, and march on them and kill them all? And first of all, who was that? There was Keshav, there's one minister, I can't remember who's, 
First of all, who's Rupa Goswami? I think he asked him, Rupa Goswami said, no, no, he, the, the, the reports are all exaggerated. You don't worry, it's just one sannyasi with a few followers. But he kept on getting reports. That, and then he asked, was it Keshav? Keshav Chatra? And he said, and this minister gave the reply that you are very fortunate that the Supreme Personality of Godhead he told him openly to a Muslim that the Supreme Personality of Godhead has appeared in your kingdom. So then he wasn't sure. He went to Sanatana and Sanatana said, Is he God or isn't he? Is he Bhagavan? Is he an avatar? He said, Well, you, you are a representative of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. You have got this position as a, as a blessing from the Supreme Lord. You are his representative. You should be able to say yourself. Why you ask me? Why do you ask me? He said, yes, I, I, I believe he's the Supreme Personality of God. So is recorded in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. So uh, the kings were respected. How they <coughs> maintained the state in a manner that everyone not only could be pious, but they had to be pious, otherwise they'd be punished. <coughs> In the modern age, there's the idea of freedom. That you're, you should be, if you want, you can, you can do sinful activities also. But it's up to you, you see. There's, there are certain limits. You're not allowed to kill people. But there's no idea that we should be ruled by Shastra. That they have the idea that as long as you don't harm anyone else, you can do what you like. So on this basis, people in the modern age think homosexuality is okay. Nothing wrong with it. Because, you know, if, if the, both people agree, then what's the harm? They're just having fun. So contraception, contraceptive sex is considered okay because, you know, if two people agree, no harm. But Shastra says that sex that is indulged in without the specific purpose of procreation is sinful. But the modern age is freedom. You just, you, just, you just do whatever you like. As long as it doesn't harm others. That's the modern idea. They think they're very advanced. They think that in previous ages people were <coughs> primitive. They all had all these taboos. Taboo, you know what that is? Taboo means something which is socially restricted. And it, you're, it, you're just, it's something considered very wrong. <coughs> just like, you see, until recently in Indian society, you couldn't just walk up to any woman on the street and talk to her. It's considered something very wrong. You can't even look at her, isn't it? But now it's changed because they become modern. They become so-called advanced. Hmm. So they think that all these old restrictions are primitive, they're stupid. But no, they're very good because that protects from illicit sex, that protects from lust. You say, well, you should, you should, you just men and women should mix and, you know, why be lusty? And I just treat them as other people, that's all. But the fact is that Matrad Svasra, Svasra to Hitrava, Navi Viktasano Bhavit, Balavan Indriya Gramo, Vidvang Sana Pikarshati. The fact is that even a, a highly learned person, someone who's learned in Shastra, they know that I should not be attracted by the opposite sex, but even a learned person, a saintly person may be attracted if he becomes very close even to his own mother, sister or daughter, says the Bhagavata. So we should be careful. And the, the restrictions in human society are there because Human nature is, or conditioned nature is such that we become fallen very easily. So the restrictions are there. So 
to avoid unnecessary trouble so that we can make spiritual advancement. And all this is upheld by the pious kings. It's a, you see, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he didn't want to meet Maharaj Prataparudra. He protested to his followers that they kept on asking that Maharaj Prataparudra, you should meet him. And he said, if you keep on telling this, I'm just going to leave Puri and I, you won't ever see me again. What is that? Nishkinchanasya Bhagavad Bhajanon Mukhasya Param Param Jigamisha Jigamisha Bhavasagrasya Vishyanam Atta Yoshitam Scha Ahanta Handa Vishabhakshana Topia Sata. He said that for one who is seriously desiring to cross over the ocean of material existence, to associate with a sense enjoyer, with a woman, with a woman or a sense enjoyer, is worse than drinking poison. So he wouldn't meet Maharaj Pratabha. He thought he's a he's a sense enjoyer. But that was standard. The sannyasis they don't mix with kings. But at the same time, the sannyasis they could execute their sannyas dharma because there's a king. If the king wasn't there, then they couldn't be a sannyas. I mean, it's, it's very difficult. If they, unless the king's upholding the culture, then uh, the sannyasis, if they're not tortured, just like under Hiranyakashipu, Kangsa, they would kill the Brahmins. Then later on, you see in Goa, Saint Francis, which saint was Saint Francis something? in Goa. He's a great saint of the Catholic Church. So he killed so many Brahmins. Those that didn't agree to be forcefully converted to his so-called Christianity, the, he, uh, he killed so many. He's a saint, you see. This is what you have to be to be a saint in Christian religion. So uh, the, the kings, they would protect Especially on behalf of the Supreme Personality of God. What does it mean that they are representative of the Supreme Personality of God? Krishna is Go Brahmana Hitayacha. Go Brahmana Hitkari. So the king's duty is to protect the cows and the Brahmanas. But in the modern age, the cows, the, the, uh, the, Governments arrange for slaughterhouses. They themselves arrange for mechanized slaughterhouses. So this is the unfortunate situation. Mahatma Gandhi, he was propagating that this, this struggle for Swaraja is, it's a religious struggle. And people joined that because they thought that yes, you see, we're, We'll get rid of the British and then we can, we can follow our own dharma. The Hindus were horrified by the cow slaughter. This is horrible. Under the Muslims and then under the British, this cow slaughter is going on and every Hindu hated this. It was something which made them feel very, very bad. So people supported Mahatma Gandhi. They thought he presented it's a religious struggle. So they thought when India becomes politically independent, then obviously the first thing, especially after they separated into Hindustan and Pakistan, so the Muslims can do whatever they like in their Pakistan, but in, in India then uh, naturally everyone thought that we had this religious struggle, and now we stop cow killing, and who said no, you have to allow the cow killing? Someone who Naturam God say didn't like for good reasons. <laughs> so he cheated, actually. He was a politician, not a saint. He posed as a saint for political ends because he knew that Indian people aren't much interested in politics because they traditionally, the, the, the king is there and, you know, it's not our the people in general. It's not their business to get involved in politics. This is modern Shudra idea, democracy. Every demon should have a vote. 
But uh, the people in jail, they weren't much concerned. So to mobilize the people, Gandhi pretended to be a sadhu. But actually it was showed in the end he was a politician. So he died like a politician, not like a sadhu. This is not, this is Shastra Vichar, you should see according to Shastra. So we need, at th that time also, people, they, they, they would often talk of Ram Raja. Now they're not asking for Ram Raja. Now they, 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 they want, you know, something. What's going on now? They want, you know, like film star Raja. The most degraded people, they become the leaders. They become the politicians. So, Ram Raja or Yudhishthya Raja or Purikshit Raja, Purikshit also, Punya Shloka, Swanama Dhanya. Purikshit, he became such a person as Yudhishthya desired that just by hearing his name we think very pious, very pious man, very pious king. This, uh, the Naimisharanya, the, the Rishis, they were shocked to hear that some low class black man was harassing the, the bull. Parikshit Maharaj, when he saw this, he was immediately ready to kill him. The Prabhupada comments in the purport that the the, uh, the sages at Naimesharanya who were shocked to hear, how can this, be, how can this be allowed to happen? That the bull, his legs are being cut off and he's, he, they, they could not imagine that in the modern age, the, the kings, the leaders of society, they, not only do they not protect the cows, but they arrange, they arrange in the name of benefit for the state, they arrange for mechanized slaughterhouses so that thousands of animals, including cows, are slaughtered daily. In India, I mean in the Western countries, they have no idea. But in India, cow slaughter is going on. They're making five-year plans and building highways and talking about the development of the nation. There can be no auspiciousness whatsoever for any country as long as there is cow slaughter going on. It's not possible. No one can ever be happy. They, they have all these psychologists and in the Western countries they make all, all these different studies how people can be happy, but no one can be happy. Nor can, nor, not even healthy. They're all getting sinful reactions and their minds become polluted more and more because the terrible sin of cow slaughter is allowed and promoted so all other sins, cow slaughter, illicit sex, intoxication, the governments are promoting this. Why doesn't the government stop this pornography? It's a horrible thing. They're talking about freedom for women, the women's rights, but isn't that degrading to the whole of womanhood? That wherever you go, you see, you know, the, the newspaper is advertised with some pretty woman. Is that the newspapers in India used to be very respectable, but now they're like some pornographic magazines. Everything, they should stop this. It degrades the consciousness. Why do they allow it? It's money, money, money. By pornography is a big business. And by, ad by advertising, I mean, there's pornography, there's direct pornography, and even this well, they don't call it pornography, but advertising everything with pictures of pretty women. That's also, it's that, that women are, the Shastra says women are supposed to be glory, to be worshipped as mothers, but then nowadays they don't even want to be mothers. They think it's below their dignity to be, to be a housewife. It's such a strange world we live in. They don't want to be mothers, they want to be playgirls. They want to have boyfriends and have careers and all that. It's such a horrible situation. So this king, where is the king? You need a king. Without a king to uphold Brahminical culture, it's very difficult for the Brahmins to even survive. The, the intellectual class 
who you could say they're the perverted reflection of the original pure Brahminkas, they're all bought off in the universities, all the people who are making all the, the you know, the sociological studies and the journalists, they're all lackeys of the system. Lackey, you know what that means? It means a low, it means a low grade servant. It's just uh, not, I mean, there are, high, there are higher grade servants, like the minister is also a servant, but just, you know, like the, like the peon or something like that. So they're all, they're all bought off. If you don't, if you, you have to do research and make a report, and if your report isn't in line with the established orthodox theories, then you're out. You're not allowed. So nowadays, our devotees, they're trying to, you know, get in line with the governments and have the governments like us so that, and then the governments will give us grants and they'll, and they'll allow us to go on. But at what price? You lose your soul. If we don't recognize that these governments are demoniac and they should be, uh, they, they need to be uh, supplanted with pious people. Of course, the demons, if they change, we don't mind. Just like Prabhupada, when he went to Indira Gandhi, he had a list of nine points to present to her. He didn't say, well, you should resign and we'll put someone pious in. He, he proposed, you become pious. He proposed that make Sanjay, who, who was her still living son at that time, who was actually a big demon. He was, a, he was a very brutal and immoral person. I mean, they all are, but some he was particularly so. He proposed that make him the king. He, he, he didn't want that she should be in charge. He said, you can be the queen mother, let him be the king. He wanted there should be a king, not a queen. So he had this, uh, and all the government ministers should join Kirtan every day. They should be initiated brahmanas and join Kirtan every day. No meat eating in public. Meat eating only if you want to eat meat, do it at home. No public meat eating. So, and then uh, only one religious scripture, Bhagavad Gita, as it is. So these were proud. He was going to say this to Indira Gandhi. He had this idea to say it. It must have been 1971 because, but at that time she was very disturbed because this uh, Sheikh Mujibir Rahman in. Bangladesh, no, it must have been 72 then, huh? He was killed, was it? 72, 73. So he had just been killed with a CIA supported plot and she was afraid that they were going to hit her next. So she was too disturbed to hear anything from Prabhupada. So he didn't, he didn't even say it to her, but he had this idea to make these points to her. That you, you take advice from me and you take power. He was, all the world was against, you see. She took power by force, this emergency. But Prabhupada, he would say, yes, take power, but rule like, like I said. I will give you the advice. He said that in England also, when he met one lord, lord something or other. He said that, well, formerly Britain was very powerful, it ruled the whole world. Now it's not. But you can rule the whole world again if you just take a little advice from me. Prabhupada said. He wasn't joking. Prabhupada is quite serious. That if they followed what Prabhupada said, the British could again rule the world. India can rule the world. We're not inter why we're not interested in worldly power. But Yudhishthira Maharaj, he wanted the power because he knew how to discharge it properly. Whereas modern leaders, they don't. They're all bewildered about the purpose of life. And they think we're doing we're doing good for the country. We're, we're developing the country by building more slaughterhouses. In Goa, there was a BJP government, and uh, there was a slaughterhouse. It was about to close down because it was running in loss, and the BJP government gave it a grant so that it could run on. So, you know, even the, the BJP, they're supposed to be upholding dharma, but they, or they don't know either. 
It's, we're not waving a flag, Hindutva. But we want that society should be ruled by pious people like Yudhishthira Maharaj, who knows the principles of religion and how to implement them in human society. How will that come about? It seems very difficult to say, to see how that could happen. In one purport, Srila Prabhupada gives the idea that the Varnashram society can be reintroduced by the propagation of the holy name. So, it's difficult to be, to follow dharma in an adharmic situation. And Varnashram dharma, the whole society, it's all, everything's held together by the kings. They're the, they're the ones, I mean, the Brahmins, they have the purity and the, the spiritual direction and potency, but the, the actual day-to-day -day work of you know, keeping things in order is done by the Kshatriyas. And without Kshatriyas, it's very difficult to, I mean, you can't have a proper Varnashram society unless there's someone to hold, to keep things in order by force. Yes, by force. People don't like that. But, but you know, force is required. For properly applied force is required. So, you know, people, they're afraid of that. They don't like that. But that is required. Discipline is required. We, do, we require some discipline because we're you know, we, have a, we don't know what to do, and we're, we're, we're reluctant to do that which is for our own benefit. But the kings, they enforce, you must do. There was the king in Van Vishnupur. He made a rule that everyone has to chant, I think, two rounds of japa every night, before they, and they'd have people coming around, checking. You chanting? That was his rule. So we need kings like that. Hare Krishna. Any question about this? Yeah. Self-discipline. Yeah, well, in the, in the self-discipline must also be there. You can't expect that, you know, the government agents are going to come all the time and tell you to chant your 16 rounds. Discipline is two kinds. External, others put pressure on you and one's own desire. That, oh, that, yes, I take a vow and I'll follow it. So both things have to be there. Externally applied discipline is also required. Don't be, we shouldn't be too eager or, or we shouldn't judge people to be very nice because they let us do whatever we like. But someone is nice if they don't let you do what you like and tell and pressurize you to do the right thing. That's much nicer in the long run. You may think, well, I, I like to live in a temple where no one forces you to get up. I don't like all this artificial discipline. If I want to sleep till nine o'clock in the morning, why not? But the, the temple authorities will be very nice if they get you up. If they don't sleep, get up. So you may think, well, that's not nice. I want to sleep. Well, but no, for your spiritual benefit, you have to rise. For example, Hare Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Yudhishthira Maharaj ki jai, Srila Prabhupada ki jai.